Zabsenke, number 1072. I'm going to talk about cholera toxin, and he is. Please keep quiet. I'm going to talk about cholera toxin and signal transduction. Here is my team. The outcomes of our research is to study the positive agents of cholera, how to diagnose the cholera disease, and methods of transmission, cholera toxin and how it's formed, intracellular signal transduction, treatment of cholera, complications and preventions from disease. And now I will leave, I will leave you with the positive agents of Vibrio cholera with my colleague. Good morning, I'm Ahmed Mohammed, 1057. Today I'm going to talk about Vibrio cholera. It's gram negative bacteria stain bank, uh, as we can see. Uh, it lives in cont uh, contaminated water, uh, so we can uh, find it uh, uh, with a lot uh, number. With a... Please be quiet. <laughs> It can swim against current through flagella. As we can see in the picture, it's transmitted through flies and from stool of patients. And this is a view uh, with the light microscope. Thank you. Hello, my name is Abdurrahman. I'll be talking about the methods of transmission. Okay, so the cholera toxin can be transmitted through various methods. Uh, first of which is uncovered food. If left uncovered long enough, will be infected with cholera toxin. And if ingested, uh, the patient, uh, the, <coughs> uh, can, the person who uh, ingested the food may be infected with cholera toxin. Uh, humans can also be uh, a vector for transmission. Humans who are infected, any contact with infected humans may lead to infection, uh, especially contact through another person's hands. Um, flies can also be a vector of transmission, uh, and they are a very efficient vector, especially in hot areas where uh, they thrive. Um, <coughs> And uh, contact to, uh, with, the, with the fly, with the human, can lead to infection. And uh, water that is improperly sanitized and filtrated, uh, if drank, can uh, cause infection uh, <coughs> due to, uh, due to uh, formation of large colonies of fibro cholera in the water because that is their natural habitat. And uh, the lastly, and uh, probably the most global of all methods of transmission, is the uh, urination and defecation uh, of people who are infected in rivers can cause massive infections, uh, especially if, uh, especially people who drink from tap waters, because generally the source of, the, of this water is from uh, the river. Um, My name is Omar Asad, my number is 1049. I will be talking about the cholera toxin. The toxin is a protein coded by the CTX gene. The, t <laughs> the CTX gene is found in the genome of the Vibrio cholera bacteria, not in its plasmid, at a temperature of 30 degrees Celsius and pH 6.6. The gene is activated. After this, gene changes. Oh, sorry. Gene transcription occurs and then translation, and the toxin is secreted. Thank you. And now is the biochemical structure of cholera toxin. It's the main cause of the symptoms. This cholera toxin that bind to G1 receptor. When we talk about cholera toxin, it's formed of a protein of quaternary structure, as you can see here. <laughs> the first protomer above is the A protomer, which is the main cause of the signal transduction throughout the cell. The second part 
is formed of five P protomers downwards here that binds to G1 receptor. These P protomers, when bind to G1 receptor, it activates the receptor mediated in cytosis, which then allows the A protomer to take action, allowing signal transduction inside the cell. And now is the signal transduction pathway. First, the B protomer of the cholera toxin binds to G1 receptor on the cell membrane. This binding of B protomer at the G1 receptor induces receptor mediated endocytosis, as we studied before. This receptor mediated endocytosis forms a good a coded vesicle which fuses then with the endosome, which is highly acidic, separating the A protomer from the B protomer. The B protomer and the receptor is then recycled back to the membrane, while the separated A protomer starts to take its action by activating the inactive G protein to active G protein by loading with GTP instead of GDP. The active G protein activates adenylate cyclase enzyme, which converts ATP into cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP takes the action inside the cell as the second messenger, activating the active pump of sodium ions outside the cell through the ion pump called CFTR protein. This increases the positive ions outside of the sodium ions, which induces the passive diffusion of chloride which are negative ions outside the cell down the electrochemical gradient, increasing the ion concentration outside, which is sodium and chloride, induces the water movement by osmosis outside the cell, which is the main cause of the, all the symptoms we will study later. Good morning, my name is Amr Ahmed, my number is 1050, and today I'm going to briefly discuss the symptoms of cholera. As previously mentioned by my colleague, uh, the cause of diarrhea, which is the most common and typical symptom of cholera, is due to uh, efflux of ions, which results in uh, diffusion of water down a uh, water potential gradient, uh, leading to severe loss of water, which may, may lead to severe dehydration. As a result, other symptoms may occur, including vomiting, nausea, abdom abdominal cramps, and headaches. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Ahmed Hisham. Today I'm going to talk about complications. Uh, if dehydration and diarrhea are not treated within five or, or, or six days, uh, probably this complication will show up starting with circulatory collapse, which means failure in, in circulating blood in, in the body as a result of hyponatremia. Uh, then this fall, uh, hypovolemic shock, which means I mean, a total decrease in the blood volume, which happens as a result of diarrhea and dehydration. Uh, then cyanosis follow up, which means uh, uh, appearance of blue color on the skin as a result of a decrease in the reach of the oxygenated, uh, oxygenated hemoglobin to the tissues. Uh, renal damage happens as a result of uh, osmotic disturbance which happens as a result of diarrhea uh, then follows up with metabolic acidosis uh, which resulted as, uh, as a result of the loss of uh, hydrogen bicarbonate. Uh, usually, in 50% of the untreated cases, we end up with, with, with death and untreated people. Thank you. Uh, I'll be talking about some of the method, methods of treatment for the disease. First of all, we can wash away the uh, toxin and the bacteria from the small intestine by uh, ingesting clean uh, water. Uh, also, intravenous saline solutions can be used to treat uh, dehydration, which is the most uh, important thing to uh, treat. Well, uh, antibiotics can be used, such as tetracycline, which in, uh, tetracycline inhibits protein synthesis of the bacteria, and sulfur drugs, which do not kill the bacteria but suppress its growth and prevent it from uh, multiplying number, and also doxycycline. Thank you.
Another way of pre preventing the manifestation of the symptoms is preventing the disease from taking place in the first place. This may include the use of clean water supplies only, uh, increase awareness by preventing uh, people from urination and defecation in water supplies, infected people of course, uh, avoid eating or drinking anything from polluted, anything polluted by flies, as previously mentioned by my colleague, that flies are the main transmitter of the disease. Uh, vaccine can be used, uh, proved low efficiency of 60 to 80 percent, so given only to workers in contact with the pathogen. Thank you. I'm finally we have came to an end to this presentation with a summary to sum up all what we have said before. First, it's a bacterial infection which causes a disease, inducing toxin secretion which binds to a receptor and induces the eye pump outside. So osmosis of water outside causing the dehydration which causes the symptoms of the disease and uh, complications. And now with the reference from where we get this information, here is the Fibrio Cholera and the Cholera Molecular to Global Perspectives Press, Foundations in Microbiology for Sedition, which is a book, Insights to Single Transduction, American Society of Microbiology, a site on the internet, and a Global Health Media Project. As well as this was a research which was previously made before. Your questions are welcome and thanks for listening to us. <laughs>